Hello friends, it's Reverend Elizabeth here with installment 12 of the quest of the rainbow dragons. Here's your reminder as to what's happened so far. Jared and Delia are two children on a mysterious quest to find the rainbow dragons. Guided by a furry little creature named Lou, they're now working on the third of seven tasks. They've traveled to the mystical city of Atlantis, accompanied by a libra library clerk named Polly. There they met the yellow dragon, Jeltizna, who frequently takes the shape of a frumpy librarian with glasses and a worn-out cardigan sweater. She's told them the sad story of the city of Atlantis, torn apart by a single question, why is there suffering in this world? Our story continues. What a sad story, said Delia, after Jeltizna and Polly had left. Can you imagine people getting so worked up about a question that they're willing to start a war? Unfortunately, yes, said Jared, who'd read quite a bit of history in the Library of Atlantis over the past several days. I think most wars are fought because people have different answers to questions. Religious wars are fought because people have different answers to questions about God. Other wars are fought because people have different ideas about who should own a piece of land or different ideas about how things should be run or how, how things should be done. What's sad about it is that when there isn't one clear right answer to a question, people fight each other to try and prove that their answer is more right than any other. Why can't people just accept that there are different answers to the same question sometimes, asked Delia. I don't know, said Jared, but the world would be a better place, I think, if someone knew the answer to your question, Delia. Delia smiled at Jared and then shook her head. Okay. So, how are we going to help Jeltizna? I know she hasn't been very nice to us, but I think I understand why now. She's so sad about what happened, and she's really lonely down here by herself. I don't know, said Jared, but I do know I need a break from all these books. Let's take a walk down to the river and see how the turtles are doing. Sounds good to me, answered Delia, and the two of them headed down to the water. Great Grandfather Turtle still slept on the shore. The sea turtle, however, seemed very glad to see them. Children, are you ready to return then? Where is the other? No, sorry, she's still in the library, and we haven't finished what we came here to do. We're actually just feeling stumped and need a break from all the books, replied Jared. I see. Hey, you want to go see something special? asked the turtle. Sure, said Delia. Jared nodded his agreement. We will not disturb the grandfather. I will take you, but you have to go one at a time. Jared motioned for Delia to go first, and so she climbed into the water and took hold of the little turtle shell. Soon they'd vanished from Jared's sight. He sat looking at Grandfather Turtle sleeping, and his thoughts drifted to Jeltizna. She's so sure that if she finds the right answer to her question, the problem will be solved, but I'm not so sure. I think people must find People might just find something else to argue about, he thought. After a time, the turtle reappeared, and Jared waded into the water. The turtle took him further down river and through an underground cave. He had to hold his breath for a pretty long time. They stopped in a small dark space where Jared was able to catch a quick breath, and then they dove deep again. When they surfaced, they were in the most dazzling place Jared had ever seen. He saw Delia sitting on a rock, her arms wrapped around her knees, her face alight with wonder. Isn't it beautiful? she asked. And indeed, he had to agree with her. The cavern they were in looked as if it were made of moonbeams. Glistening, sparkling stalactites hung from the ceiling and were reflected in the water of yet another underground lake. The whole cavern was illuminated by brilliant gems set into the ceiling, and somehow they didn't just reflect light, they produced it. The light was different from the greenish light of the lichen they'd found in the sea cave on their way to Atlantis. This light was pure and bright, and it made everything look more alive. Jared found himself without any words to express his feelings. So he simply reached for Delia's hand, and the two of them sat together holding hands, breathing in the beauty. After a while, the turtle spoke again. 
It is time to go. The tide is turned and the current is strong. I'm afraid if we don't leave soon, the chamber where we stop will be full, and you don't have enough breath to make it the whole way without stopping. Delia immediately went over and hopped into the water, waving to Jared. See you on the other side, she said. See ya, answered Jared. And then he was alone in the moonbeam place. He turned around in a full circle, noticing everything, enjoying all the different shapes and sizes. When the turtle returned, he had memorized the place so that he could carry it in his heart always. When the turtle had deposited Jared on the shore beside Delia and they'd both dried off, they walked quietly back to the library. Somehow they didn't want to ruin their mood with too much talking. However, mindful of their quest, Jared's thoughts shifted again to Jeltizna's question. Delia, he said, I really don't think there is an answer to why is there suffering in the world. And even if Jeltizna found one, her people would find another question to fight about. Somehow, we need to convince her that she's asking the wrong question. And how do you propose we do that? Achoo! asked Delia. I'm not sure how we could possibly get her to listen to us. We're children, and she's read most of the books in that whole entire library. It will be very difficult to get her to even start thinking of other questions. I know, said Jared, you're right, but I think that's why we're here. We have to find the right question for her, the question that will set her heart free. I think we should start thinking about that. Hmm, said Delia. How about what's the source of truth? No, said Jared, that doesn't feel right. I'm not sure there is a single source, and so people would argue about which source is better. How about, how can people live in peace? Eh, I think folks are always going to have differences of opinion about that one, said Delia. We need a question that no matter what a person's opinion, will point that person back toward being peaceful and back toward being friends with each other, even with people who have different opinions. It needs to be a question that helps people remember that things look different depending on where you stand. We need a question that teaches people to see beauty in other people's answers and in their own answers. A question that teaches that there are lots of different right answers so that no one needs to defend their answer as the only one. Maybe what can we learn from each other or how can we get along with each other even when we disagree? Delia paused thoughtfully, then burst out. What about, how can we accept and love one another and all of our different opinions about the many mysteries we find in life? Oh, said Jared, that's it. I like that. I like it a lot. Let's see if we can get Jeltizna to come back. He got his flute out of his bag and began to play, and Delia began to sing along with him. Far away, in the distant reaches of the library, Polly heard the music and began to tug on Jeltizna's arm. Jeltizna, listen, do you hear that music? Come on, let's go. No, snapped the dragon. I won't. I want to find my answer. I won't get distracted again. Back to work. Her voice was even grumpier and harsher than usual. Meanwhile, Delia and Jared played a second song and then a third. After they finished, Jared put down his flute. I don't think he's she's coming he said sadly she has to said delia there's got to be some way to get her here jared closed his eyes and fixed the image of the beautiful moonbeam room in his mind and then he put the flute to his mouth and tried one last time to play the song that he played has never been played before has never been sung never even existed until that very moment he played his own song, trying to capture the feeling he'd had when he touched the Pearl of Wisdom, the feeling he and Delia and Polly had when they rode on the back of Grandfather Turtle, the feeling of being in the presence of the other dragons. He poured his heart into the song, and the dragon, the yellow librarian dragon, Jeltizna, lifted her head and finally began to listen. As if she were in a trance, she followed the sound of Jared's song through the aisles, leaving her books behind her. She absent-mindedly took off her spectacles and left them on a table. 
Her shoulders, typically hunched over armloads of book, began to straighten. When she came around the corner and Delia caught sight of her, the change was astounding. Here was a woman as beautiful as Krasnova had been, standing straight and proud, hair streaming down her back, eyes a luminous gold, now that the ugly spectacles were gone. Even the ratty cardigan had somehow become a robe of woven sunlight. Sheltizna, said Delia, while Jared continued to play, you are searching for the answer to the wrong question. Instead of asking why is there suffering in the world, you need to answer this question. How can we accept one another and all of our different opinions about the many mysteries we find in life? If you can find that answer, your people will never fight again. Sheltizna said, stood silent for a long time, thinking it over. Then she whispered, Yes, 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 I see, I see now. Oh, I've wasted so much time. Whirling around, she ran back into the library, calling over her shoulder. Thank you, children. Thank you. Polly, come on. I need your help now more than ever. Polly hugged Delia and Jared goodbye and set off after Jeltizna. Take care, you two. I'll see you when it's all over, she said. Are you sure you want to stay? Yes, Polly answered. This is where I belong. Delia and Jared walked back to the water. Grandfather Turtle was awake, and perhaps Jared imagined it, but it seemed like the massive turtle winked at them. They climbed on his back and headed back to the surface world for the next part of their journey. And that's the end of installment 12. Your dragon task for this week is to find your answer to that question. How can we accept one another and all of our different opinions about the many mysteries we find in life? Hopefully you'll have help thinking about this question from all of the time that you've spent in religious education, because of course it's the heart that lives the question that lives at the heart of our faith, Unitarian Universalism. I love you. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.